And I think we're live. Shake your tail, yes. brother. We are live. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for joining us on a, another PDR Workshop live Q&A, episode 44 this time around. And just to make sure I don't get any background, which we, we talk about how to point out pre-existing damage, whether that be paint damage or, uh, I guess, previous PDR, body work, um, any, of, any of the things that would uh, not play in your favor. <laughs> while you're trying to repair that particular panel. So as we always do, let's go around the room and introduce ourselves, and then we'll do the tools if anybody has any. Uh, Dave with Windy City Dent Repair out of Chicago. Ryan, RPS Dent Repair out of Baltimore. What's up, guys? Chris, Dentless Touch, Washington, D.C. area. And does anyone have any tools they would like to share? I, I do. I got some new stuff. You got to count on Ryan. Okay. I got something new that I've been uh, using this past week. Uh, oh. It's the Drew Tool Drew's Tools Carbon Fiber Magnetic Knockdown. Um, I bought them at MT last year. I have two of them. Oh wow! Um, yeah, I mean it's so. I mean, when you're done using it, it just goes. It sticks right to the panel, <clears throat> and that's it. That's cool. Yeah. So I've been using this. Uh, super lightweight. Um, it's got a metal end, but just another knockdown interchangeable tip magnetic on the inside as well to hold the tip so so what i've noticed is the carbon or i think it's carbon with two inserts on the end it doesn't uh, you don't get a lot of vibration through the uh tool as much as the aluminum ones have you noticed that dave no i can't say i have um i mean it, to me it just it feels like another knockdown to me i don't feel like anything special with it but I'm not getting anything where it feels weird in my hand while I'm using it. Definitely absorbs some energy. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I've noticed. Uh, I just like how it sticks to the panel. It's super easy. You don't, <laughs> you know, a lot of times when, it, you know, you're just knocking on the floor or back in your pocket, uh, it'll stick right to the panel and you'll, you won't lose it. So That's cool. if you're working I, on a roof or something like that. <clears throat> how, now I've had the magnetic ones. And they tend to roll over to the tools, or maybe I'm just kicking it to the tools. And then it's a yeah. hard time finding it because it's on the tool. Yeah. <laughs> Did that happen to you? Uh, I can't say it has. I mean, <laughs> I've been using it only this past week. So, uh, well, you know, but it's usually mostly just for doors. I like it's just sitting right there, right on the panel for me. Well, if you can't find it, check the rods because <laughs> they're attached to those bad boys. <laughs> Ryan, what you got? So I got a couple things. I got a Black Friday deal that I got. I'm a DeWalt guy. Got this pack for 150 bucks. That's a steal wow, and a half. A steal. Yeah. It's got two wow. four amp hours and two two amp hours, so I couldn't pass it up. So keep your eyes open. Even after Christmas, they usually have some good deals. So this is definitely a good pickup. Um, second thing, and I actually used it today. Um, the edgy hookers. I haven't had them. Yeah. Dave's like, you're going to get them. You're going to sit in your toolbox. They're you're gonna rarely going to use them. <laughs> I used it today. Mm -hmm. This is awesome, actually. I actually, it, it, I didn't think it was going to be as useful as it is. <laughs> um, I used it on a quarter of a Civic today that was pretty smashed right at the uh, bumper edge. And it worked really, really well. Hmm. So I'll keep you updated. It looks like he added this little rubber O-ring so it's not slapping against the slap the slide hammer. Yeah. Um, you know, Dave streams big with the O-rings on stuff. So Yeah. But the construction seems really well. Um, I can't complain. It's it's a cool tool. We'll see how many more times I use it. it kind of re reminds me of the I think the body shop. They have like a bigger yeah. one that they use a lot. The big slugger. Really, yeah. It's not really designed for what we have though, so but we'll see. It seemed like and a that, useful tool. I got this from Black Friday. Slide hammer, right? Yeah, the slide hammer hooks in here and you you slug it slug it out. So um I uh did a video with it, so it'll be out in the next few weeks giving a little explanation of what it is. So um I got it on sale for I think sixty bucks hmm, for bad. Black Friday. So that's all I got. Edgy hookers. <laughs> They're usually running ninety nine dollars. 
They were on sale for sixty bucks or sixty nine dollars for Black Friday. That's so Matt says he has those hookers. What's the U hook one for? With those uh, those edgy. Hookers? I really don't have a clue. I got nothing for you. Sneaking Can you it show all it? the way inside of the panel. This, this hook, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I'm lost. Yeah, I don't, maybe I don't know. up. In, yeah, Matt has them, so maybe he can chime in. Maybe like a really deep door edge, maybe. Deep you door know? edge, maybe. I, I don't know. know. <laughs> I guess when I I gotta call Dave Stream tomorrow, so I guess when I call him, I'm I'm gonna ask him tomorrow. Like what, say, is, what is a super <laughs> long hook for? Yeah. You know this one. This this one's definitely useful. This is what I use today. Yeah, so. that's yeah, makes sense. But I will ask Dave Stream. I'll bring it on next week, and have the technical answer for you. Perfect. Huh. Go at and it. Matt man. is. I just read the <laughs> just the beginning part of his question, but anyway, Matt is like a I think a fifteen year tech, and he doesn't know what they're for. <laughs> <laughs> I think nobody does. It comes in with the kit. All right, so I have not tried this out, but everybody keeps talking about the hog glue. It's probably not the best time to use it, but I believe you can only get this at Anson PDR. And this is uh, Daniel Grom's, I believe, glue that he uh, came up with. I mean, he, I don't believe he's a chemist or anything, but he put together uh i guess the right glue to help him pull on motorcycle tanks which is ha which has tougher uh, metal than uh or thicker metal than than regular uh you know the car the car metal so um this is supposed to be the all-around temp and the black glue that he sells is the one for warmer weathers so i'm going to try this when i'm in the shop so i can give it uh some fair testing against the green glue uh, but if you guys are interested now, I don't know if this is going to be my go-to glue because it's uh, about 35% more expensive than the green glue. <laughs> so as trying to stock, you know, a couple of guys or, or three guys, that's going to be expensive for me. So it's got to wow me to, to, for me to be able to stock, you know, 10 packs of this stuff in my shop. So, but, but. I also want to show you guys, when you order from Anson, you get a care package. And I thought this was pretty neat because it's the only company. Uh, Dave String gives you a little note, um, a little handwritten note. But Anson PDR gives you this little care package. And I believe it doesn't matter how large your order is. And I haven't opened this, but we're going to kind of open it live. Uh, so they give you a bunch of tabs. It should have a guide in there, Chris. Okay, yeah, so they give you a bunch of tags. They did give me one stick of hog glue, so that must be something that they're doing December. So if you want to try it out, just order something from Anson, and they will. Uh, they should send you that. So they're giving me uh, a koozie. A little, yep. That. You know? You can drink uh, that with your ginger ale. Sticker for days. So, I mean, Plain Jane. Never heard of that company, but Plain Jane. Uh, All right. The glue. Yeah. Oh, that's purple, it. The glue. Purple glue. TDN. This is my favorite logo for them. <laughs> so, and then this one. I'll see you guys. So, they give the sticker stuff, but everybody keeps asking me. There it is. <clears throat> uh, which glue for what weather? And they give you this on every single order, and that shows you uh, what glue is best. For what particular weather and what you're trying to pull like the temp conditions now they all say high strength and i guess a few of them say medium strength yeah so <clears throat> i can kind of give you a recommendation obviously the green and the red and the stuff like that but it uh i guess it's not too detailed but it's something it's the only one i believe on the market right ryan mm -hmm. yeah yeah they've been and running so, it for a while and yeah, so you know kudos awesome. to them man you know this is a question that gets asked, I think, daily to me. So yeah. just 
It's in a PDF. Yeah, and, it's hard, and it's hard to answer because, you know, we're, we're not in all extreme weathers, at least we're not here in Chicago. So having that little list is nice. Uh, mm -hmm. But it also shows that since we go through all four seasons, we're consistently changing glue as well. So mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times I do stick to the green or just tab weld. But, you know, if you're trying to experiment with other glues that maybe work a little bit better, Ansa does obviously provide that little card. So mm -hmm. you can. Uh, and Anson's super whatever. easy to deal with. They are really an easy company. Yeah, and, yeah. Do, you know. And I think this is their new tab. So it's the white compression head, flat, I guess. And so oh, that's kind of it's kind of overexposed. But anyway, um, so they gave me a whole pack of it, five pack. So anyway, guys, there's a free gift. Uh, that's great marketing, if you ask me. So if you want some free stuff to try out, Anson PDR is winning right now for me. Mm -hmm. And that's it. That's all I have. That's it. Let's talk about the topic. Nice hat. <laughs> do we have? Nice hat. Uh, you know, cheers, you know, for the spirit. <laughs> all right. So let's see. Do we have any questions we need to go over before we start? Rick out says damage? the U shape is for fender ed edges. So. Mm. I don't see. I guess it's to try to straighten out that flat piece of metal. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I can see that. I can see that. You won't be doing as much, no. beating, I guess. You're kind of more finesse to it, I guess. Huh? Fender lip. Yeah. So straight, straightening it out, right? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Hmm. Well, let's talk about how to point out pre-existing damage. What do you guys look for? Uh, I, I think you do this all the time, right? Mm -hmm. Like no matter what type of car it is, it could be a brand new car. I think you kind of just train your eyes to look for anything that, uh, that someone can work on or the orange peel difference and stuff like that. What are some of the things that you're looking at Ryan or, or uh, mostly, mostly the paint, you know, that's usually my first, when I'm looking at a customer's car, you're going over damage to give them an estimate, you know, uh, you're seeing what the paint finishes, if it's got the same orange peel, if there's dirt in the mm -hmm. paint. A lot of times I'll, I, I've got a little body shop and dealership background and I'll always go and feel the edges. You know, if it's mm -hmm. a hood, I'll feel the edge of the hood. If it's dry, you know, it's been painted. Same thing all around all the edges. Right. Um, and that's always, Hey, you know, has this thing been painted before? And they're like, no, no, that it's never been in an accident. And in your head, you're like, we know it's been painted. So do you tell them? I do. Yeah, I, do I bring too. it to their attention. Um, for one, if it's the panel I'm working on, I want to make sure I'm covered also. Yes, of course. Um, so, but on that end, you know, the color match, if the color matches, there's a lot of stuff you can pick out with, with paint. I, I think you have a depth gauge, don't you, Chris? So, yeah, so I have a, uh, I'll show you guys what I use. Let me screen share real quick. See, I go about it two ways. Um, I'm going to look around the whole car for pre-existing pre damage or a painted <laughs> panel. Uh, but also the panel that I'm working on, um, you know, if there's any spe anything specific to that area, I'm going to try to point that out as well. There's a chip over here. This is where I'm working. Um, you know, I won't typically mark it off, but I'm going to at least let them know. Um, if there is something in that area that I'm, where I'm working, maybe a scratch, a deep scratch or something like that, I'm going to point it out because I don't want them to come back after the fact and say, hey, why did you scratch my car here? No, we already went over that. This is where I was working. That was obviously pre-existing. Does it um, change the price for you? And, and what circumstance will it change the price if it does? What would change the price? The pre-existing damage? Yeah. So you have a painted panel. The den is in a repainted panel. You may have to yeah. use glue. You may not. What What is your approach to the customer? Do you charge a little the bit more? No, the price because you're not going to glue. No, the price isn't going to change, but the process will change. Mm -hmm. I'm right. going to attack the, the damage differently. And I and I okay. explain that. You know, if it was a panel that I have to glue pull, you explain to them, hey, I can glue pull. There is a chance that the paint could come off since it's not a factory finish. You know, you always try to educate the customer. Um, yeah. We we do have a, a question here. They're trying to figure out what I mean by dry. 
So if you go out to your car tomorrow and you touch the edge of your hood and it's smooth, it feels like a smooth surface with your hand. If it's a painted, not all the time, but sometimes they put, it's almost like a foam tape and they, they roll it on the backside and then they'll, they'll paint the panel. It leaves like a rougher feeling on the edge. You can really feel that it's dry, that it's, it's hard. Of course. Yeah. It's a little more, mm -hmm. it's not as smooth as a factory paint edge. Mm -hmm. So that's what I mean by rough. There were a couple guys asking, um, but yeah, it's the jaw says it's dry, dry sprayed. So a lot yeah. of times the edge doesn't get the paint all the way around the edge and it leaves it rough. So that's what I meant by rough. Um, now, I'm surprised they, go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, so now if they don't know the panel has been painted, right? Mm -hmm. And now you're pointing this out to them. Have you guys ever had running any issues with that? Not really. I haven't either. Either they didn't know, it, you know, because it's a used car or they've had the car forever and they know that it hasn't been painted or they know that panel has been painted, either one. And I, I've had a customer with a brand new car that said, no, it's brand new. You know, I said, well, things do happen in transport. They happen at the port. Mm -hmm. yeah, it could be happen at the, at the, uh, you know, at the factory, they had to repaint it. So there is. We've all been in a situation either at a dealership or a body shop where they've had a brand new car with, you know, right. one mile on it and it's at the body shop. So anything can happen. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just surprised. Uh, we, we charge a little bit more based on difference in approaches. Uh, so, yeah, I was approaches surprised. as in glue or as in push. Is that what you mean? Well, I mean, obviously, um, if it's glue pull only, you're going to charge more. If it's a glue pull only and or let's say I can't glue pull and now I have to take the door apart. I have to yeah. charge. For that. So I'm, uh, yeah. Yeah, so that's what we do. I mean, but I got to let the customer know the reason why we won't glue pull is we won't jeopardize that. Mm -hmm. Or we can sign a waiver. Yes. Uh, and if you guys are a part of denttrainer.com, they have waivers. And actually, you don't even have to go there. If you're part of Mobile Tech RX, yes. they have waivers too um, in their little hidden section. They need to, okay. <laughs> need to make it right. a little bit easier. So, yeah. But for no. me, <laughs> go ahead, sense. go ahead. Go ahead, I said yeah. that makes sense. I, I didn't understand what you were saying before. Like the price doesn't change, but that's also I've stated before that we put the R and I on the estimate anyway. So if we okay. if we don't do it, then it's coming off. That's right. So yeah, right. we're not charging more. It's already built into the estimate. Um, and if yeah. we don't do it, then we're okay. We're gonna take this twenty six dollars, or if it's a headline, whatever it may be. I think Ryan, uh, yeah. and we're gonna take Ryan. that off. But if uh, okay, and you can print that right off. It's a little blurry, but yeah, so it is the um, glue pulling waiver that they have there. So what you're going to do on Mobile Tech RX, you're going to go into settings. You're going to go into settings, and then at the very bottom it says company, subcontracting, resources, tutorial, and contact. Hit resources, and then legal documents. Yeah. So They this, have a bunch of stuff, right? They have a subcontractor document, yep. I believe. Non-compete, rough contract, right. uh, uh authorization to repair so and what's nice guys too with mobile tech rx that if you if you, there is pre-existing damage on this vehicle you're able to to actually store these previous photos or before photos um into mobile tech rx and into that person's estimate or work order when you change it over so there, you're going to be able to, to kind of cya or you know cover your guys's butt if uh, you know there is any question um so if you're not marking it now um or didn't know you had the option in mobile tech rx you can add before photos so um if there's previous pdr if there's a, a scratch in the area that you're working um you know missing paint whatever the case may be um you're able to actually take photos enter it into that person's work order and keep it there just in case anything you know may come up in question later i'll yeah. take pictures of it too in the mobile tech rx right exactly that's what i'm saying exactly yeah. And you're able to keep it there on their work order exactly. or their estimate, which is nice because if anything comes up after the fact, well, you were working in this area and now there's a scratch. Well, I actually, here's a photo <laughs> of, you know, the, I took a photo of that scratch previously. I'm, you know? I'm big with the explanation before we start. You know, you try to explain everything. You're both looking at the panel a lot of times, yes. right? Or looking at the, the, the damaged area, you and the customer. So you're able to kind of explain you know, any areas of concern for yourself that, you know, that you have, obviously their concern is the damage, uh, the 
the main dent or whatever you're working on. But if you're noticing anything right off the bat in those areas, you want to point that out while you're already there mm -hmm. with the customer to let them know. We, we got to get Ja Slick on the show because he answers a lot of the questions for us. <laughs> so, Ja, reach out. We'd love to get you on the show. You've been here since, I think, day one. So, mm -hmm. so what, I, yeah. what, what, I, what I use is it's really, really inexpensive, guys. Um, let me screen share. Oh, here we go. And so, <clears throat> this $19 um, uh, paint thickness gauge. That right there, I use. Uh, to basically determine how much mud or if the panel has been repainted. It only works on steel though, but for 19 bucks, that's probably about 70% of the cars anyway. Uh, and they do have, I believe some aluminum ones up here if you want to spend a little bit more money, but a paint thickness gauge is, uh, is definitely uh, useful. I would say, and I buy these for all of my guys. And I have one of the, these at the shop, which works on aluminum. So if anybody's interested in that, that will help you out a lot. I had a situation where I had a Jeep um, Wrangler come in the shop. Clean car. Had like 40,000 miles on it. He was talking it up. And he had some weird dents in the roof. Kind of almost like it was hail and then they painted over it or basically hail and they painted over it or acorn and they painted over it and i said man something just don't look right with this with this damage and he's like i want them all out and i'm like it looks like someone painted over this so anyway as we uh the paint was flawless the stickers on the car it says rubicon i believe it was like brand new like it was fresh but it only had forty thousand miles it's like a 10 year old truck at that particular time and it came in uh last week anyway so when we uh when we inspected it I noticed that all the panels have the VIN numbers on it. And so I said, hey, what's the VIN number on the hood? And it was a different hood on the car. <laughs> uh, he was like, man, that, that, how, how'd you know that? And I said, well, you know, I know from the Honda days, they, they run the same VIN numbers. <clears throat> he wasn't upset because he said, man, I got like $5,000 off of, uh, you know, Cully Blue Book and stuff like that. But that right there showed him that, yeah, they probably took this hood off of another vehicle. Uh, still was a Jeep, you know, a Jeep hood, but they probably painted it, uh, the brown that he had. So, and that was the case and that, you know, had no difference in the repair on that one, but, uh, just wanted to let him know that his vehicle was uh, a repo or at least the hood. So check VIN. That's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Working with stuff like doors and hoods. Um, they have them on the bumpers too, but you probably won't do much on the bumpers. So you can check the VIN on that. So I did this have an instance. I was working on a smashed Ford Fender. Mm -hmm. The damage was towards the door, but right over the wheel, there were three sections of prior paintless dent repair. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I was at a body shop, so I wasn't dealing directly with the customer. Mm -hmm. How would you handle it? Would you just fix it and be done with it? Or I mean, I'm going to make it look better. Are you going to pull an estimator out first and say, I, well, <clears throat> this is what I would do on the sheet on mobile tech, not even a sheet, the mobile tech RX it, you can note, you know, previous mm -hmm. PDR. I'll take pictures the best way I can. I'll make it look better. And then I'll just fix what I'm, what I'm supposed to fix. And then on my way out, I'll let them know, Hey, you know, that panel had previous PDR. I did clean up some of it. Uh, but just to let you know, previous PDR, um, you can check my pictures that are in the estimate if you, you know, if you want to, because that right there helped me with time. I pretty much solved all these questions because what's going through his head is, oh, did you fix it? Oh, we cleaned it up. OK, great. Uh, if there's any complaints, do I have any documentation? Yep. It's in the in the, you know, the invoice that I sent you and I'm out the door and ready to my next stop. That That's what I would do. <laughs> I, I brought them out, showed them the two spots. Mm -hmm. and then did the repair cleaned up what we could clean up it was a pearl white and it was kind of modeled so i just didn't want to fix my spot and then say oh no there's still something here it was a carmax car i'm sure it was fixed they probably didn't really notice it but you know after you touch something sometimes you own it from there so i'm a big communicator yeah. <clears throat> after effect 
Because a lot of times when I pull them out, they're like, yeah, 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 yeah. Just make it look better. I wasted his time and mine. Hey, you're at, your, butt's, your butt's covered. <laughs> that is me. I don't know. But, Ryan, you do like 40 body shops a day, so. <laughs> I do a couple. A couple? That's an understatement. All right, so what are some of the things? You talked about previous PDR and how that can uh, come back and bite you. What about the repainted panels? Has anybody had a situation where you just didn't check and you found out the hard way? Yeah, so I had and I've also done it where I've known and I <laughs> and I knew it was it may happen and it happened. So I actually had last year I was on um I used used a lot pushing a den out of this painted what was it like a 07 Toyota Corolla or something, and you could tell there was some body work, there was a dent in it. Went in, started pushing, and you just feel the tool give, and you look down. And there is just a stream of body filler sticking out. So what they ended up doing mm. was drilling holes in the panel, slugging it out, and filling it with mud. And the mud must have been through the panel on the backside. And I stuck my tool in it, pushed it back through. It looked like a looked like a noodle coming out. Oh, wow. So you got to watch for body filler. That's another thing that I always seem to get caught up with i do a ton of body shops and they're always like hey we missed this dent can you see you know see if you can take care of it and you go there and you you push the dent and you go to knock down and it leaves those tiny little divots because it's in the mud yep. yeah mm -hmm. so you definitely have to watch the um, what's your trick for that do you have a trick for that toll cut you toll cut them out yep mm, that's new I've never I, they don't it. go so it depends on how hard you hit it Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can toll cut them out. Sometimes they're too deep, and it is what it is. Well, sometimes it's always the first divot that lets you know that <laughs> yes. that that's going to yes. happen when you go to hit it again. <laughs> yes. So you know, if you do the blunt knockdown, it won't leave those div divots. Now, of course, you you can't do a sharp dent in it, but exactly, and that's the tough like part. I mean, you're trying to use sometimes an R four tip on a painted panel so you don't mar the paint, but it's not knocking down the high that you actually want. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times you're just spreading that out more, mm -hmm. um, you know, or, yeah. or taking that risk with the, uh, but I think heat helps in that instance sometimes where it kind of lets that Bondo kind of mm -hmm. bounce back almost. And if you just kind of knock it when it's cold, I feel like it's just going to leave that divot. But if you're in a nice warm <clears throat> setting, I feel like sometimes it'll be a little forgiving. And I've been in a booth right after a car has been painted. It's not really um, tacky, but it's it's still soft. And I've hit it with a knockdown, and it's left a divot, and you can sit there and watch it relieve. Yeah, we've done that. So actually, and Jonathan had a question real quick about a torch. And I was going to recommend the, the regular yellow propane from Home Depot. But Ryan has this little mini torch that I've seen him use. Oh, and the snap on one. It's and I don't know where you it's so it's snap on. Yeah. Um I saw when I was out there last time him using this little mini torch, um, which I feel is a lot more compact, a lot lighter, um, and it still does the same has the same effect, I would think, right? Do you, do you know why I bought that? Because it's Cause, obviously more convenient. <laughs> no, not even that. You know why I bought it? Because seeing sometimes seeing a customer's face when you got this torch out there and you're waving <laughs> this big torch around, their face is just they you hear know, the just, clicking of yes. the propane and the ch -ch -ch, and there's a torch and you're just going at it. Yeah. So I, I was like, let me try this thing, and it's it just doesn't look as intrusive it looks like as a little. It looks like a little heat gun almost. Yeah. You can barely see the flame. It's a blue flame. Um, right. You can barely see it. As long as there's not just, alcohol on the panel, you're good. Right. And, and butane is what it runs with. Runs yeah. Out? Yeah. Okay. So it is butane. Yeah, it lasts a long time. It's a great little little torch. It was, uh, I think, like eighty nine bucks. Mm -hmm. Snap on carry is it? I mean, you can get the same thing at uh, Home Depot. They make those little little hand torches. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely definitely a, a good torch. Um, somebody on here said you can't push body filler. Oh, depending on depending yeah. on the dent. Yeah, I think it depends and on depending the, on the filler, the, the filler, filler. It's, 
are they there's used? so many yeah. factors I feel that go into that. Um, you know, if you're pushing on a repainted panel in general, you, you don't know where it was painted, how it was painted, the material that's in it, if it's good, if it's bad. Um, you're going to be just taking an overall risk. There's a lot of times where you can get away and everything's fine on a repainted panel and it's pushing and, and moving, knocking down just like a regular you know, factory panel would. Or you're going to get these repainted panels that are just going to be uh, cracking on the first push. Yes. You know, nothing you can do about that. Um, you took that risk or you, you know, you've maybe pointed out this pre-existing damage to the customer uh, and they said, no, go ahead. So we'll see what happens. Okay. That's where. What, what, uh, what, I, when we were at, um, what was that place up at Ryan? Um, uh, mm, brain fart with the, uh, Kiko, um, uh, little, uh, Keystone, Keystone. Yeah. <clears throat> so they were actually talking about fillers and the difference, um, the difference in the fillers and how there was a, what is a 3M filler that they, couldn't quite get their hands off, but they had some old stock yes. that they're selling for like an extreme premium or they're trying to hold themselves. So I believe, you know, the filler quality can determine some of the stuff too. Oh, definitely. Uh, for definitely. sure. You know, some of them are a little more brittle. Mm -hmm. I remember pushing on a, it, it, I think it was an Ashton Martin and I could not see my tip of my tool. Could not. <laughs> I mean, I'm like, where is my, am I pushing on the glass? What is going on? So I push a little harder and about two inches from where I'm at, the, the filler just falls right off. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. Which, the, and, oh, and, 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 and which, and a lot of times, you know, we're trying to avoid the customer, obviously going to a body shop again or having mm -hmm, to, mm -hmm. and, you know, and there's, and there's times where, you know, this happens and we created that. Uh, yeah. scenario, so, which kind of goes back to our, our previous episode with the unhappy customers, right? And then now you're in this mode of trying mm -hmm. to to yeah. make good on what you obviously created a situation with. I deal um, with the body filler thing daily. Typically at the body shop, yeah. though. Yeah. Which is a lot easier yeah. than if you're at a yeah. retail customer's house and this is happening, or if it's at maybe, you know, someone's location like exactly. Chris. Exactly. Exactly. The worst is when you're like, where, where did you repair? Oh, I repaired over here. The dents over here and you're pushing and you still can't see your tip. And I'm like, come on, dude. Yeah, come on. <laughs> yeah. And Matt, the body that always tells you just, just oh, a yes. little bit right here. Like, yeah. oh, right, right. You know, they feather it out. Yeah. You know, it's, <laughs> it's four feet long on the side of the car. <laughs> yeah, uh, Matt, they, they Matt was brought around. up a good thing. Um, have you guys ever had a repainted panel and left the suction cup mark on yeah. the paint? It happens all the time. So I have. The best I, fix yeah. is torch or put it in the sun. Mm. The sun will get it to relax. Torching it too will help. A lot of it's heat. But well, When I was a new tech, I did that on a Volkswagen. Scared me to death. And you can I, wet I'm sand it all day long and it won't go away. No. I've been there West Sand it twice. I said, oh man, I'm, I need to paint this whole panel. <laughs> and then when it went, I was so scared to tell the customer. I think I was like one year in. I did it out, out you know, outside. It was struggling because I didn't have a shape board. I just remember that day. Just a bad day. And uh when I got the customer, when she came back from lunch, it was gone. I was like, well, ma'am, you know. And it was just completely gone out of all that hard work. So, so okay, learn learn something new on that one. So yeah. just and let it be. Let it fit. So, you know, and before I, I don't think it was as popular, but, you know, uh, we that's what we had to worry about, repainted cars or repainted panels. Now yeah. it's the, mm -hmm. the PPF and push and polish uh, said the same thing, leaving a ring on mm -hmm. um, cars that have clear bra or paint protection film. That I don't know. Now, so, yeah, it'll leave a ring just like it would a painted panel and you're doing the same process. You're heating it up. It's oh, really? Re melting mm -hmm. or reapplying, you know, uh, that clear bra again in that spot. So little torch, a little heat will kind of, it'll just go away. Okay. Um, but that's what I'm checking for more often than not. Now I'm taking my fingernail and I'm just at the corner of that panel, just checking. Um, cause a lot of these cars are coming with a full either hood or full front clip with, you know, you know, uh, bumper fenders and hood are having paint protection film or clear bra. They go, each word goes hand in hand, I guess. But, um,
that's what I'm checking for now. Because if I go to stick that suction cup on there and I take it off and the customer sees now a huge ring, yeah. you know, I have to be prepared to, you know, to react. Or I already know I'm gonna stick it to the glass. I'm not gonna stick it to any of the front of this car. I'm gonna have to uh put my light somewhere else. So I've I've been running with the stand a lot because just like uh you know putting your knockdown on someone's car or what why i don't like that mat is just seeing the mat over top of your car and you're just laying tools on top of it just i wouldn't want it done on my car so what i do is i run the the the, the stand that um i believe james lee sells where you can just basically um snap on your limited light and it never touches the customer's car medusa really, adapter yeah yeah, the, yeah that's yeah I really like that uh, that stand. I think it's like 125, 145, uh, and it'll save you all. Because if you do get a car that fresh out of the uh, paint shop, there's nothing you can do. I've I've tried to set my light on buckets and other cars, and it gets crazy. Just pull out that little Medusa uh, stand and just set up yeah. and just go. Dave Johnson had something just posted about that on uh... – I think it was Instagram stories last week. It was a metal window guard mm -hmm. on the ground with his suction mm -hmm. cup, suction cup and held it up. I was like, that's a great idea. Yeah. The simple things in life we don't think about every day. Yeah. Hmm. Um, so Matt also said I had a good point. Uh, don't put a suction cup on vinyl. The ring won't go away. So the clear bra or paint protection film is not to get confused with a wrapped vehicle or vinyl. Mm -hmm. um, that ring won't go away is what he's saying. So um, I typically don't even try to mess with it if I know it's wrapped. Uh, and you usually know because it's a funky color or it's matte or it just kind of looks off compared to the rest of the car. If it doesn't yeah. look like a factory color. Mm -hmm. um, you guys can also feel it with your fingernail as well. Uh, but you can check a lot of the jams a lot of times for for vinyl. But yeah, if you try to put your suction cup on that, either your light, if you're trying to glue pull or something like that, you got to check for these things now. Um, you know, and hopefully, if you're working on a customer's car and you see previous damage, they're pointing out these things. Oh, well, I've had the front clear broad. A lot of times they forget, so you're going to yeah. ask or you know, try to point these things out to them and get as much information about the car as you can. Do you run ac across that a lot, Dave? It, it, working at the high end dealership that you that you at right now? Wrapped vehicles and a, a lot of PPF. Um, um, that's what I run into mostly, which is why, like I said, I'm always checking the hood or the fenders for clear bra with my fingernail. I'll just kind of feel. And you know what? Paint, if you uh, run your fingernails across painted cars, you know what that feels like. If you you'll feel this sponginess or this kind of this buoyancy under your fingernail, and it's the clear bra. Um, and Jonathan. I just ask if anything, but yeah, I do run into the, to that a lot. So I'm just using a uh, suction cup on the window or I'll just wrap it around my cart. That's just next to the car. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. You can do that. Yeah. But Jonathan has to go for it. Part. You got it. Um, working on ceramic coating. What is your take Dave or who has the most experience? I have a, some experience on it. I don't see a difference. The only time I see a difference is if I have to sand. Mm -hmm. If you have to wet sand it a little bit, you can feel the difference in the, in the sand. It's a lot harder. Uh, when I go yeah. to clean the panel with alcohol, sometimes it'll leave streaks and you have to actually buff it out. I haven't um, had that problem. Yeah. yeah. And so I've asked the detailer before. I said, hey, I've used the I, I use 91% alcohol from Walgreens. Why is it making these streaks or why is it being uh why is it harder to wipe? He goes, because it's crappy coating. So <laughs> that's what, you know, but that's just one detailer. He could be biased. I don't know right. um, because they have their own little feud with, you know, uh, mm -hmm. all their coatings and everyone's the best. So, but, you know, that's what his take on it was. Um, it was leaving streaks. If I go to spray the panel and wipe, I couldn't wow. wipe. It was getting caught wow. on the car. And then that spot like would get like foggy or hazy. Now I'm sitting here trying to figure out what to do um, and buffing it was able to torch it. <laughs> Uh, I wasn't going to do that, <laughs> but uh, I was in a buffet. Guys, do not torch it after <laughs> putting spring alcohol on a panel. Please do not. It only do that. burns for like a couple minutes. Do not spray alcohol. Like, and like 15 torch seconds, it it'll burn and it'll be car. gone. It doesn't hurt. Um, but yeah, by buffing it, I could take it away. But I, that's that coating that was kind of messing with the, uh, or the alcohol I've, was messing with that coating. I've, I've uh, pushed and glue pulled on it on the, um, 
Ah oh, man, G Tech, G Technology, whatever it is. Um, and then I went over to my buddy's shop that uses Ceramic Pro, and I couldn't glue pull on that. So something that Ceramic Pro is doing that does not allow me to glue. I tried twice. He had to actually remove it, and then I was able to to get a bite on it. How did he remove it? Uh, he had some bottle solution, buffed it. Uh, it was like a two, maybe three step process that he uh, that he did. I wasn't even paying attention at that time. I was like, man, get this crap off so I can blue 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 pull this. And it it had bite after that. But that G, uh, yeah, I think it's G technique. I think they they call it. Or I guess it's a couple of ways. Yeah, that stuff I can blue pull. <clears throat> James it's Brown's on it today. Yeah. But uh, I have no problem glue pulling that. So I think Ceramic Pro is better. And that's just from my perspective. Uh, and I do work on a lot of the Ceramic Pro cars now nowadays. So that's my anything else to do. Uh, any other questions? Overspray. Mm. You guys ever had a car with overspray on it? <clears throat> and you go ahead and you try to glue pull. And it doesn't even stick. Yeah, you're right. For some reason, it doesn't. And I think it's just because it's a textured coating on top of the paint, and it's not getting a good bite. So keep your eyes out for overspray. You know, if you feel that panel, and you you can almost hear it. You know, it's yeah. got that shh, shh, shh. Yeah. So check that out, too. Um, what else do we have here? Do offerings such as stand liner and dent dowel tools reduce the overall number of tools needed i would say no <clears throat> um i would say no no i think it's just different stand liners in another ballpark yeah you almost have to learn how to use that tool uh the dent dial i really feel that it's a need yeah it has to be an addition to what you have for sure. It doesn't it's, take. I think it's easier on the body. Yeah. I'm going to say that. I mean, that I would. The, so, yeah, the stand liner tools aren't, I would say, like as functional. Uh, but the dent dial is a multi use tool. You can put yeah. different tips on it. You can bend it in different ways. You can get the functionality out of that tool um, more so than maybe a, just a regular flat bar with a single tip on it. So. Uh, it just depends on the type of tools. The, the dent dial is going to be versatile. Um, the interchangeable rods, that's going to you know expand your versatility with tools. Uh, the ultra quick release set, you yeah. know, that's a versatility <laughs> in tools. You only have a bunch of a handful of rods with one attachment to it rather than have a bunch of solid rods with you know solid attachments or multiple tools or whatever. I think the, the newest way of shortening down how many tools you carry is the ultra. Yep, hex head stuff to where mm -hmm. you can have five rods and one handle. Yeah, and uh, extensions on that yeah. so that it, it works pretty well. Um, we have another. What was that? Oh, in. Do you charge the insurance companies for uh, extra for the prior p crappy PDR, or you just turn it away? Uh, it depends if it's exactly where you're working. Um, I actually have had a hail car that was terribly done. The Kate got hail damaged again. Um, and we ended up, we did end up getting a little extra money for the bad PDR because we were working around it. You know, I told him I would clean it up. Sometimes you, you're stuck, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> but that's that, that's that um, communication you have with that insurance guy. Some guys is like, nope, we're not paying for it. Don't push in that particular area. Yeah, nothing you can do. I mean, you do work for the insurance company when it comes to that. Uh, I will try to go ahead and clean it up because a lot of times it just needs to be knocked down. To me, it will look a little better. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe a couple of pushes if my tools are already there. So I just basically get it to about 90% better than what it was. And then, you know, just don't charge unless I unless it's, hey, you have to redo this dent that someone did. Then I charge. Uh, but yeah, that's it. Um, there was another question on 
getting leverage on fenders. Has you have you tried the uh, the edgy tire leverage tool? No, have not. Yeah. That's that little world. pedestal thing that has a different yeah. extension to go on it. Yeah, I'll tell you that my fender tool is a dentile. Yeah, that thing is a freaking beast, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <clears throat> I want. Well, I would like a longer one. Um, yeah, you know, just to have more leverage. But um, yeah, dentile, just bending that thing, getting it up in the fender. Allows for not having to have or need a, you know, I'd, I'd say a system, but I still use a good old fashioned wood block with a ratchet strap if I need leverage on a fender. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now there, yeah. It says, do any of you guys use that fold up round line board to find dents? Oh, the, the, the dent thing you have. It's uh, yeah. Chris, it's that fold out yeah. round yeah. thing with the lines. Text car the other day. Yeah. 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 I use it to show, um, to show insurance adjusters, even sometimes customers, the, the how large your damage is, it works. And it, you know, it folds down. So it, it, it works. I wish they gave it to all the insurance companies so you can really see uh, even the small stuff you can see. Can the lights lens graphic face away from the bulbs or do you run them facing the LEDs? We run them facing the LEDs, right? What the like if you have a green board? Yeah, the board. Oh, is he talking about which way the board is on? I think the so. Lens or you the can lens. run it either way. Well, the lens is only one sided. You want yeah, to but he's the saying color. if you if you flip it, if it makes a difference. Well, yeah, I would think so. That the and that's be, I would think that the vinyl that they use, the sticker. Would probably I I just wouldn't see the point. You you're using it for the color, yeah. So, and I don't know, guys. I have stared away from the color boards. Any you know, sorry, but for me, I can't clear see the colors anymore. I use yeah, the clear lens all the time, guys. So, <clears throat> that like, and I so I was using the green for a very long time, and the green was like when I first got it. I'm like, this is amazing. Yeah. Then they just like as working when I was started working more and more outside because I must have got it like I, I think I got it at MTE last year. Mm-hmm. I think Ryan picked one up too. And I think we got these green boards. Yeah, so too. it was still cold yeah. and it wasn't, yeah, it wasn't that bad. Or, yeah, maybe you picked one up and it wasn't that bad because I was working a lot inside. But once I got outside with the green board, I was getting, uh, I was having a hard time um, seeing it on certain colored cars mm-hmm. where I wasn't having that issue with the clear lens. So I couldn't quite I finish it with it. Okay. Yeah, it, yeah, I remember you actually saying oh, that. It's, it's it, yeah, it's clear lens all the way, guys. I, I mean, for us, that's three people. So I thought I was the only guy. I was going. No, I, I don't even like that fog mm-hmm. lens that they give. I think it dims it way too much, and that's just me. Mm-hmm. I like it to be. I like it to pop. I like sh- like the nice is bright. If the brighter, the better. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm using just a nice clear lens. I mean, ideally, you're looking at it for the gradient effect. So the brighter that light can be on the end, to a certain extent. And fade in uh, with as much detail. Now but I did like, try. To, go ahead. I'll say, but <laughs> the green board I have red as well. They light up sometimes on some of these cars, and it looks great. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it's like, uh, but I, then you're consistently changing out boards. So I just do clear lens because I have uh, no issues with it. But I I don't knock the other ones either because if I'm inside or if I had a um, you know a spot or something like that. And I was able to to comfortably change out lenses all the time, and that's what I would do. But mm-hmm. I'm rocking the lens. So we have an aluminum question here. Where did it go? Uh, I use heat on aluminum all the time. That's, I think. Um, yeah, and sharp. Yeah, and sharp tips. Yeah, sharp tips. Yeah, any new tool options to help reduce high-strength steel pushes needed? Sharp. I would say Dent Reaper, any sharp, like you said, any sharp it's going to be metal to metal uh Uh, on well so the other day when i was working on this uh acura mdx the other day and it was high strength steel um it was pushing better with rubber and knocking down better with plastic wow and there's different grades of high strength steel guys so yeah it was a 20 i i have to look here for what year it was i think it was a 14 or 15 or 15 or 16. Um, and it was a, a, a big smash and the way it was moving was not like regular metal. Um, 
I pull it up in Mobile Tech RX. I think it's a high strength steel, mm-hmm. um, not ultra. But the way it was pushing was uh, better with plastic tips um, or rubber on the tip, not metal to metal, and knocking down better with plastic knockdowns. Hmm. Not metal, mm-hmm. not the VIP. The VIP was leaving divots, whereas a rubber cap or a plastic was knocking down like a VIP would. Wow. And the fact that you had to improvise, I mean, we do this all the time, right? Yeah. So, I mean, that that goes to show you guys that nothing is set in stone. I'm pretty sure most of the vet veteran guys that are in the chat would tell you, you have to improvise on almost every single repair. Uh, so there is no straightforward stuff. Um, is there any other questions? How do we know when you're working on aluminum? Uh, if you don't have Mobile Tech RX, it'll mm-hmm. tell you there. Um, if not, have, so Ryan has a phone case that has a magnet on the back uh, for his car. I keep just these little circular um, little magnets in my toolbox or the knockdown like this that's always in my pocket. Mm. I can try to touch it to the panel and I'll know if it's aluminum or not. Mm-hmm. Most or cars push have aluminum polish anymore. Says, or push and polish. If you ha- don't have anything magnetic and you're trying to push that thing and it won't move, you're most likely on aluminum. <laughs> <laughs> now, how do you tell how you're still? It's just literally just pushing, right? Or Correct. Mobile. That's a feel thing. Or mobile Tech RX. Or Mobile Tech RX. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And someone asked if we're reps. Yeah. We're not reps. Uh, you know, realistically, for Mobile Tech RX, it's just the most functional app and it works for us. Um, we, you know, we've had them on the show before and, you know, the improvements that they're making to this application is just helping us make yes. our job easier. So that's why we use it. Uh, it, it's strictly why we use it because and it I, works. I, I said this a couple shows ago, I bet you 40% increase, I couldn't even, I 40% uh, increase uh, okay. in using mobile tech RX. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's, it's a proven a lot easier. We talk about it a lot. We try to bring up good products, good tools to use because they work. We're not getting paid by any of these guys. We're not, you know what I mean? Uh, it's just a good, good product. So it seems like a lot of money. You're, I guarantee the first month you're going to make your money right back. So, and they always have deals. They had a Black Friday deal. If you guys are going to MTE, they have um, MTE deals. Just go up and talk to those guys. They're super easy to talk to. They're awesome. I mean, it, their customer service is awesome. I mean, Chris, you had a, a big issue last year with invoicing with and stuff with the email. Oh, stuff. yeah. And I think if you guys uh, go, at least use Dentless, I believe it is, you get $100 off. Uh, so it gives you like a little coupon. And I basically reached out to them and asked them if I can give you guys any discounts. Uh, and they said, yeah. And they worked it out to Dentless. $100 off uh, for signing up. If you guys want to sign up, just go ahead and use the coupon code. No big deal. And thanks, Richard, for the kind uh, words you had posted earlier or chatted earlier. Uh, I think all of us, all three of us try to, you know, give out as much information as we possibly can. I, I, I guarantee you all of us know the time where this information was hidden <laughs> behind closed doors, behind Honestly, tents. For yeah. me, guys, you know, and, you know, it's the information. It's, you know, uh, we're giving you tools to do this stuff right. Uh, but that doesn't mean you're going to be Picasso. You know, it's so, you know, it's like we give you the paintbrush doesn't mean you're going to be Picasso. It's about taking time and taking the stuff and putting it into actual practice. Right. Uh, that's what's going to make you a better tech. These are just some of the things that we use that help us every day. So, yeah. And I, and I, the old vets that are on here, you know, uh, they answer a lot of questions. Yeah, in the there's chat. so much feedback. And that community <laughs> together is, is the real key. Uh, trying to get this up to, you know, 50, 60 guys on the live uh, chat interacting with each other, not just with us. Uh, this is a sight to see when the chat menu is just scrolling. So, you know, I'm, it, I'm happy over here. <laughs> it's pretty cool. And I was actually talking to one of the guys that are on here right now. Um, you know, he, he was just saying how much information we're giving out. And I tried to explain to him me, Chris, and Dave talk every single day. Yeah. So this is fun for us. You know what I mean? We're not doing it 
We're doing it just because this is the same conversations we're having at nine o'clock in the morning. <laughs> at seven thirty in the morning, we're talking about stuff. So this is just our average everyday information. Yeah. And like you know? I and I know a couple of people are here regularly every single Monday and we yes. appreciate it. Yeah. And yeah. and you guys are getting to know each other. And if you guys are exchanging information, that's even better. Uh, so you guys can create your own little, Hey, can I call you tomorrow at nine? And hey, I have this dent and I need help or something like that. Um, you know, I need help with my business. I, I can't get customers. What are you doing? You know, um, that's the whole point of it. Yeah. We grow together, not separate. So, and if you guys are going MTE, book it, book it, <laughs> come on out. It's uh, the announcement's been made. I blast. think that the resort hotel or where it's actually being held is now sold out. Correct. Chris is renting a camper because <laughs> he didn't book the hotel. <laughs> Chris likes to wait for the last minute for everything. It's just the way he is. But he's going to figure it out. He's going to figure it out. So if anyone actually uh, has extra space, Chris is going to be looking. Yeah, Chris he's going to be there stay. with a suitcase. He's got a flight. But... Oh, man. But book MTE, like, guys. It's going to be fun. Yeah, definitely. And we're going to have a meet and greet at MTE, guys. Yes. I'm an early riser, so we'll probably have two. Anybody wants to meet me at the Waffle House <laughs> at 6 30, 7 o'clock in the morning, I'm good. Uh, and then we'll probably have one around, uh, probably around what, dinner time? You're going to be in bed doing your taxes, so it'll be me and Dave. <laughs> Chris is going to do the early morning. Me and Dave are going to do the late afternoon. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I'm not doing my taxes this year. I'm going to enjoy the moment. I'm going to live in the moment. Perfect. And Chris, Chris on likes his sharp, he likes his sharp ginger ale with extra ice. <laughs> Three limes. <laughs> Three limes. <laughs> Sitting at the bar like this. Pinky mm -hmm. up. Oh, man. <laughs> hey, guys. I want to thank you for joining us on episode 44. Uh, we have a lot in store for you guys uh, in the coming um, weeks, guys. So definitely stay tuned. Any recommendations on topics? We do have probably about 30 of them. Uh, and we're going through uh, going through them now. But any recommendations, my email will be below for topics. Um, and again, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, Brian, Dave, you want to say something? Oh, Excel actually have our first. Is that the first one we had? What's the name? Yeah, so I think Excel just had our first like super chat. Oh, what? First, wow. so, uh, see, we don't even know about this, right? I know it from other YouTubers. So I Correct. think I think he gave four ninety nine. As a gift, I think I'm not sure, but that's what it looks like. Do you guys yeah. see that? No, I do. Yeah, it's. I think it's a super chat. Oh, there it is. Yeah, but I'm not sure. Maybe it's 4.99. Maybe he's just plugging himself. Maybe not. No. <laughs> Maybe he got too excited. I don't know. We had over 20 guys from Denser Kids in yeah. Minnesota. Oh, he did work with. Did you do work with uh, Don Cavanaugh? Don. Maybe it's yeah. A super Oh yeah, super chat, super chat, super chat. Yeah, yeah. that's what's up. I appreciate it. <clears throat> yeah, definitely, guys. Um, yeah, I think I'm gonna go next year to Don's event. I didn't know he had it uh, set up like I that. I knew, but it was uh, kind of last minute. Mm -mm -mm. So hopefully we get Don on the show here soon. Uh, I think, right, guys? Yes. 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 It'll probably be after MTE. Mm -hmm. uh we are taking christmas and new year's off so we've got some exciting next two shows ought to be pretty interesting yeah we got them locked and loaded and head over to excel dent Re removals youtube channel because i think he comes out with videos like every week so is ryan and dave so make sure you head over to their uh youtube channel ryan you got like five in queue you're yes. putting out a video I'm every two rock. days so you pumping it pumping I'm it rocking. out so the worst ahead. audio you'll ever hear, but man, let me tell you, I'm really trying. Oh, you yeah, he did film the event. That's right. That's right. Don sent me the uh, video. So uh, I think on the next event, I mean, our next live show, we'll share the video with you guys. Um, and he did a, what was it? A dent for uh, toy, what was toys it? for tots. Toys for tots, where they did dent removal for free for toys. No, you, you, you paid. Mm-hmm. 
they did the dent repair and then the toys they purchased them. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, how do you got your first employee? You want to answer that question? Oh, no. that's the that must be show his topics. Show topic. Oh, okay. Right you got him, Dave. You got him, Dave. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. All right, appreciate it. All right, guys, we'll see you on the next uh, live chat. Ryan, Dave, you wanna? Dave from Windy City Dirt Repair out of Chicago. Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, <laughs> Twitter a little bit, Snapchat a little bit. Ryan RPS Dent Repair, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, MySpace, Twitter, Snapchat. And look, guys, Dave and I, give us some help here. We're really <laughs> trying to get these YouTube channels up. Trying. Just yeah. give us some love. At, and it, it'll, really, it'll really benefit all of us, even you guys. So... Um, you got to put your YouTube channel in there. It's RPS Dent Repair, right? Yes. Okay, and Dave's is uh is Windy City Dent Repair, right? Correct. All right. So, yeah, just search them in YouTube. Uh, I believe Dave's. You can just click on right here, but uh, Ryan hasn't did anything in the chat. Thank you. <laughs> it's guys. coming. It's really coming. It's coming. It. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys on the next live show next week. Peace. See ya.